On the 6th of June 2019, Dorothy M0LMR was invited to give a short talk at the Women in Tech event run by Southend Tech. Other speakers covered topics such as a social networking circle, teaching STEM at schools, SEO copywriting, and an artist working on image and brand recognition. Dorothy spoke on the subject of amateur radio, and here's a recording of her Women in Tech talk. Good evening everyone, I've never done a talk in my life ever, so be gentle with me. So yeah, it's my first time. Uh, I'm here today basically talking about women in technology, and my technical part of the world is in amateur radio. So yes, my name is Dorothy Stanley, and it's a little bit about myself as a woman in a te technical hobby. I got interested when my husband Richard was working as a courier and while he could not use his phone in the car he could legally use amateur radio to keep in contact. Amateur radio is a technical hobby and there is some studying for three for, for theory exams and some practical exams there are three classes of license. One, foundation. This has been designed for most people to pass with minimal work and covers the basics plus a few practical exams. This allows most amateur bands that are low power levels of only 10 watts and restrictions on use. This is the foundation book, as you can see. These are now outdated because I've got a new design coming up, new syllabus coming up, but it's relatively basic and thin and looks like 32 pages long, and that's just the foundation license book. Then, so. then there is the intermediate level. This is harder than the foundation and is quite a bit more technical. And once again, there are practical exams as well as including basic soldering and assembling of a basic electronics kit, which is what you can see there. I, ha I have brought it with me, but I haven't got it up the front here anyway. But I had to do recognise uh, resistors, uh, capacitors, do soldering, uh, wind that kind of near the antenna on there, 52 turns, and that is blood, sweat, and tears. It cuts into your fingers. And eventually, when it works, you can actually hear, uh, I think it was La Radio Luxembourg, you actually, actually heard the, hear a radio station on it, so quite a while. Uh, this allows, uh, the intermediate level, allows 50 watts and slightly less restrictions in use is the foundation one. Again, this is the old style box, these are the ones I had. It's got in the front here, it's got all like the uh, component symbols and things you have to learn to recognise and those kind of things as well and uh, lots of diagrams and this book is about 78 pages long so it's quite a bit thicker than the uh, foundation licence level and then of course there's the advanced or full licence this is the final level this actually has no practicals at all but it's much more in depth than the previous exams and gives full privileges in a maximum of 400 watts that we're allowed to use. And as you can see, this book is much thicker than the other two put together. It's just all practical reading, uh, all sorts of things. And this book is about 103 pages long. So that is all three levels of the licence of the exams for amateur radio. Each licence has its own format of call sign, foundation, and as you can see, all the different ones that are on there. And my original foundation call sign was M6 EBQ, and then there's intermediate levels. And my intermediate call sign was 2E0 NCE, and then there's the full level licences and all the different ones you could have and had in the past. And my full call sign is, and what it is now, is M0 LMR. Whilst, as I say, this is a technical hobby, I myself, I'm not really a technical person myself, but I found the foundation quite hard and the following two levels progressively harder. Whilst the foundation is made for every even newcomers like myself possible to pass, I did struggle with all the new information and ideas because I've never heard of done anything in electronics or more, wiring, soldering, anything like that ever at all. I couldn't even wire a plug. I got very upset when a guy asked me to wire a plug. He said, yeah, I'll wire this plug at an intermediate level. And I burst into tears because I couldn't even do that to begin with. So I really overcome an awful lot to get where I am. And uh, I struggled with the intermediate every week and passed with a minimum score and passed, but a pass is a pass. I knew to get the full license, I would have to approach this differently because there are no practicals in a different manner, so I downloaded the syllabus and found all my strengths and my weaknesses and after Nick, now you may know him, M0 NFN, put on Essex Ham, the uh, website about the Bath-based distance learning course, I immediately enrolled 
and after six half months on the course, I concentrated on my strengths and in June 2015, I sat and passed my full exam and in July, I received my full course on licence. Okay. For me, in the, my interest in amateur radio is communications, but I'm not overly interested in talking about the technical side when I'm on the radio is talking to people. I just like to chat in general. I learned the technical stuff that I had to learn and needed to learn to pass my exams, but I left them on the exam table. I'm not interested in I need it. I'm a member of quite a few amateur radio clubs in Essex and have visited ones in Kent, and every six weeks, two months or so, we go to a club in Suffolk. Uh, they do like this maker space kind of thing, or well, they've been they visited like a maker space kind of place as well, which is quite good. And uh, again, they just all get together, like you people all interested in the hobby, and just talk about the hobby, show different things and aspects of it as well. And uh, but these clubs are set in, uh, in Suffolk. Most of these clubs meet at set locations, except by Lara, which is British Young Ladies Amateur Radio Association. This club has members worldwide, and their main club, which I use, which is online, and is called Essex Ham. I was lucky enough to meet Pete T. Sipple, M0PSX, who runs the Essex Ham Club as he was tutored on both my foundation and intermediate courses and has helped me immensely in the five years I've been licensed. He has boosted my confidence and even encouraged me to run my own my own net once a month and it's, uh, since November 2015. He's talking on the radios and um, it's based ideally for women to come and join in if they want to because they all say, oh I don't want to talk about, they all talk technical, antennas, aerials, DBs, this, that and the other. And, you know, I said, well I just talk about anything and everything myself. So that was the idea of it and you know, the time people come on and go and it's just a net that's run by wild once a month for anyone for licence to come and join in. You know, really enjoy doing it. The Essex Ham site is brilliant as it tells you what is happening in all the clubs, so much so that the calendar on my phone is actually synchronised with the Essex Ham website, so if it's going on in uh, Radio Land, I know where it is. I love the field days, which once again Essex Ham arranges quite a few, mainly at Gallywood and Shoebury East Beach, and also some special event uh, days. There is normally three days a year we go to Earl's Cone Airfield to support the Air Ambulance, for, uh, Air Ambulance Week. Royal voice communication is my preferred choice, can't you tell? I have also used more efficient data modes at a friend's house uh, in uh, Shuby. His name is Tom M0ABA. It's about to signal off the moon to the stations in Germany. This is called EME or Earth, Moon Earth. You're literally from the Earth, you bounce your central signal to the moon, you bounce off the moon, comes back, takes a couple of seconds. And uh, so I've spoken to some people in Australia. These two German stations are actually the first furthest away because the path that signal took. Because of this, I uh, because I did this as a foundation license with 10 watts restrictions, so I'm actually in a book called Getting Started in the Year in the I'm actually in this book on page 60, I think it was. And that's me there. Mm -hmm. That's me actually in a book. <laughs> 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 so I'll do that for me, I guess, in here. Thanks to Peter Essex Ham, we get mentioned at least 50% of editions of Radcom magazine from the RSGB, uh, National Society, which is the Radio Society of Great Britain. And uh, these are some of the pictures. I mean, there's pictures in here. There's uh, one of them at Suffolk Red when I was making something in there. And another month, uh, other pictures here. And uh, another month here. I've even had people turn around and say to me, oh, it's not a very good copy because you're not in it this <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so some of the pictures you can see. There's one there of them um, on the Essex Ham Field Day, and uh, also on the another one there. There's when we were gathering in the, uh, in the pub at the we gathering, and we were gathering in the pub to sit and chat and talk about radios, problems, have a few uh, drinks or two if the weather's really bad, and if it's nice, we go in there afterwards and see how we felt of the day. Last year, Essex Ham won the National Club of the Year award, and we were lucky enough to be at Newark, where the trophy was awarded. This is like a big, um, I suppose, you might, a bit like your Raspberry Pi jams. Uh, it's a big place where you go. It's like a big rally. You can buy radios, equipment, talk, chat, etc. And the RSG the, uh, awarded uh, Essex Ham the National Club of the Year. As you can see in these two pictures there. That one, and the actual award is the picture below it. Mm. I have had a rare moment where I've had to put what I learned into practice, and this is my husband and myself at Suffolk Red with Essex Ham, where I actually made a halo antenna for the two metre band. 
like to beat that coil around money. It's a copper bar that to bend it around money. A bit of drilling and uh, screwing. Oh, it's all cool. Anyway, Laura is most likely known to some of you who is also a licensed amateur and a member of Essex Ham and more technical than myself. She's much more technical than me. So nice and there you go. Thank you very much for listening. And there are any questions? And uh, there you go. Thank you very much. Did the amateur radio service have any satellites up? Do you use them at all? Um, there are satellites up there that people can use, and I'm not exactly sure how they do them because I haven't actually got around to doing it myself. But I have seen people with uh, antennas in their hands do them, and a small uh, one of these small radios because they've got these nice ones. These are a good basic start for getting them on radio once you've got your foundation license about 20 pounds from china or anywhere they, they, they're a two meter 70 cents radio it gets you talking to local people local nets which look like, like the one i write uh, uh chair as well and using these because you need to use the lower band the vhf bands for uh, using satellite work they connect these to the antenna and they wave it around to find where the satellite is and then they can talk and they do this in red as well <laughs> yes why do you always put your call sign after your name? So it's Laura M6LHG. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's our, basically our recognising who we are. That is mm -hmm. my, well, I'm just saying Dorothy. That's my, uh, my, um, my name. That's what I am. There's nobody else with that call sign in the world anywhere. So each call sign is unique only to you and no one else in the world. Apart from going to the pub, what do you do on a field day? <laughs> Sorry? A field day. A field day. It's a day where uh, lots of hands gather. You can take your own equipment and you can set up the radio. Uh, you can do uh, different uh, like HF bands or VHF bands, or you can do data modes and things that a lot of people do. Um, it's oh, another people can come along and join in amateurs, ask questions. Oh, how do you put this antenna up? What kind of antenna might be good for me? Or oh, like your radio, can I have a go? Get your confidence up, which is how I got all my confidence up with Essex Ham on field days where we used to go out and um, you know, they get, you'd go on the radios, talk to people. Sometimes you can use your own call sign or you can use a club call sign, which is a special one, just for that club and right. you can use their call sign as well. And uh, just enjoy the weather, play radio, ask questions, learn, do practical things like putting up antennas, taking them down, putting radios together if you're, if you're studying for any levels and things and just generally ask questions. Right. Yes, Ed. Yeah, competitions. Uh, yes, there are radios. Yes, there are competitions that people tend to do. Uh, often, people talk around the world and they ask a question at a competition, and they ask. Um, they just want like a signal. How your person who's going to somewhere? Can you basically can you hear me? Okay, and uh, which number am I? Twenty-seven, and your number is forty-nine or something like that. And people gather up competition uh, uh, to see how many they can get in a, in a uh, competition. I think that's how it works. Um, sometimes when you talk around the world, I know it's dependent on things like weather, and, and obviously you, you got in the magazine because the distance you did your one is quite hard. So you're not going to be able to just like phone people up and go or speak to Joe Boggs again over in Australia. How, how do you keep in touch with them? Is it only through radio or do you sometimes email? Uh, you can email. Yeah, you can. A lot of people, once you get a license, you join. Um, this website called qrz.com and you put your call sign on there where you are a little bit about yourself you don't have to but a lot of people do it's nice to because then when you contact someone it's a lot of people call it like fishing because with a phone you pick up you can talk to anyone but with radio it depends how your signal reaches goes off and hits the atmosphere comes down again where it lands in effect who you get and the conditions and yes you can either email the person because generally people put their name their address and an email and you can talk to them if you want to contact them that way if you want to and also uh, through um, often when you've had a speak to someone you've got uh, these what kind of QSL cards which are left in the bag and they all give you little cards they send you little cards sometimes which is nice and which is another way of saying thank you for the contact with you and uh, you can send your ones back as well and it's nice to have little, 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 little like postcards really so you can contact with different ways. Um, age restrictions, sorry. 
Sorry? And the age restrictions to the club? Uh, no, really, not really. I mean, some of the youngest ones, I think about seven or eight, the very youngest. Um, was, you know, before you die, if you like. But yeah, no, it's, no, it's just, it just depends on whether you can pass the exams. You have to do them uh, foundation, intermediate, and form. You can't say, well, I'm very technical, I'll go straight to the bar. So you have to do the, the foundation first to get a course on in intermediate. Uh, to p and pass our practicals before you can sit the uh, form. But people have done, I believe, I don't know if they've done three in one day, but they have done mm -hmm. at least two in one day. You can do something like can sit two, as long as you've registered and signed and, and that you can do two. Some people have been able to do two in a day. I don't know, some people may do three, I don't know. But I could do <laughs> or three in one day. <laughs> if anybody is interested, where would you recommend they go and look? Um, first off, I would say go to Essex Ham because they got they actually do a training course online. Uh, you can go to an Essex Ham website which is essexham.co.uk. All the information is on there about the hobby in general and the basics of the hobby and what we do and how we like to. Uh, it's a communications hobby that is very friendly and sociable. We go to different events with clubs and uh, set up and come along, hello, what you're doing, sort of thing. And uh, so, yes, yeah, so I would go to uh, online and the best place, pretty much, is Essex Ham. And as I say, it has an online foundation course there you can actually do the course there and then go to just clubs if you want to just for the practical parts and then you can sit the exam you don't have to do the course at the clubs as well but it is a good day that i would recommend doing both the online course and the course at a club and there's lots of clubs in essex and also on the essex town website is a link to all the clubs in essex where they are on ones that do training and ones that don't do training as well it's the if if essex town don't know nobody knows basically <laughs> We've got some leaflets if anyone is interested. Get web addresses and bits and bobs. And Amish Radio helps the community as well, doesn't it? Yes, we uh, do things like the uh, Essex Air Ambulance. We go out and uh, and the International Air Ambulance. We go out and um, we have film days again, operating and uh, using the call sign to talk about uh, where we are and to promote the uh, knowledge of the air ambulances and. Uh, 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 donation boxes and things like that as well and also we've done different clubs i've been to about six clubs i think and we've done ones we uh sos day which is for royal navy life institute again we're raising awareness and uh, hopefully making donations towards their causes and charities as well and there's a group called raynet that deal with the emergency disaster type stuff so if the phone network goes down we can still transmit and operate i do tidal Coastal tidal watches, river watches. Get your feet wet. Yeah. I think Dot needs enough around our clothes after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For details of other similar events in the area, please go to www.southendtech.co.uk. This feature was brought to you by Essex Ham.